In 2017, Buddy Duress made a name for himself with a breakout performance in the award-winning film Good Time. He has starred in other films, including Person to Person and the Safdie Brothers' Heaven Knows What. While a talented actor, Buddy has been unable to stay out of trouble. His rap sheet includes drug charges, petty larceny, identity theft, and criminal possession. After wrapping production on the feature film Flinch, Buddy was arrested for grand larceny in the third degree. The following conversations were recorded with Buddy from inside Rikers Island. An inmate at New York City Department of Correction. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. How's it going in there? What's going on in there? I mean, last time we spoke, we were talking about your incident, you know, with the bank robbery, the alleged bank robbery, um, and then you getting uh, back into Rikers. Um, maybe we could pick. Maybe we could pick the conversation up from there. Good man. You writing any letters? Not really. Except for my, my, my legal shit that I'm taking care of. Yeah. Okay, well um I I'd like to know I, I wanna talk about how you got into acting. I was I was living on the street with with Arielle Holmes and she introduced me to the Safety Brothers or she introduced me to Josh. him for to discuss I guess a script or something and I met him I was honest with him I told him that, that I, I, I sell dope and, and I, I shoot dope I'm living on the street and uh, a couple months later after hanging out with him a few times he asked if I wanted to play a dope dealer in the movie and heaven knows what and that was the first movie I did I guess I got good feedback for, for my role and then What was it what was it like filming that movie? Uh, that was crazy. Filming that movie was crazy. I, Tell me about it. Why was it crazy? What was crazy about it? Can you cut off the recording for a second? Yeah. I'll be honest, I kinda just played myself in that movie. That was that was the first role I ever had. So kind of for the first one, except I mean I was I was acting out scripted scenes but there wasn't very much of a character I, I kind of was just being myself for that movie only that movie every everyone after I played a role it was crazy because I was on the run the whole time and if, if I would have got caught the whole movie would have been fucked up basically but you know, I gave him my word I, I wouldn't I wouldn't anything stupid during during that time we were shooting so we completed the whole movie I got locked up like two days later when we finished wow two days later yeah. what were you wanted for at the time possession charges I mean I did when I got caught I did like seven months of state I already had three months in I did ten months out of a year and then what happened with your career and your life after that? You got locked up again. You made it through the yeah. movie, and you gave a great performance in the film. Okay, well, the movie, after that, person to person, I guess you could say I played it like a con artist, kind of. How did that movie come about? What's his name? Dustin, Dustin Guy Diva. Uh, was introduced to me by, by Josh Safdie. He came to visit me. They both did when I was in Rikers and he told me he said when when you go upstate don't well actually this was after I had 
got out, and I got, I had to go back upstate for a three-month violation. That, that's when he came to visit me, and he told me, when you go upstate, because parole had violated me, but when you go upstate, don't get your hair cut. Every time you go upstate, they shave your head. So I refused to get a haircut. I spent my last week upstate in the box out of the 90 days. What is the box? Solitary. Solitary can find the hole in the box. So you spent a week in solitary confinement because you didn't want to cut your hair for a movie role? Yeah. That's crazy. It's dedication. <laughs> that is dedication. I mean, it's only a week, right? Only a week in solitary. I was going to come out looking like a convict or a cancer patient. That actually reminds me of a scenario regarding our film that we that we were facing do you remember pretty much going into that movie at some point after you were already cast in the film um you or your manager told me that you had to go back to New York at one point to see a well no at the time you told me you had to go for like an audition or an interview or a photo shoot or something I think it was a photo shoot remember you li you lied to me about it but you said it wasn't a big deal you were like they're not going to put me away you're like there's a very small chance that they're going to send me back to jail right and you're like don't worry I'll be back to LA the next day and we'll keep filming and I learned that and and it was very concerning for me because for, you know, for me, I'm shooting a movie, and if I film, you know, four days, I, if I'm like the first week into production, I've solidified you as a character, and I've shot days, and if you go back to New York, even if there's a 10% chance that you're going to get locked up, but you ultimately decided not to go. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. We were after we filmed the fourth day. You were so excited by this movie and what you were doing. You were like, "Fuck it, bro! I'll deal with the consequences later. I'm not going back to New York." That's right. I forgot about that. That's true. Tell me the story. Why don't you tell the story? You remember? I do remember that, and I remember exactly what it was for too. I, I was on probation. It was misdemeanor probation. It was for some bullshit that happened where. It was like an entrapment thing, kind of. With a cop setting me up. What did they set you up? How did, how did they set you up? It was a cop begging me. Basically, I didn't even know he was an undercover cop. And he was begging me, like, like please, I'm, I'm dope sick. I know so-and-so. He named a bunch of people that he knew, that he claimed to know in my neighborhood. I know this person. I know that person. Please, I can't get in touch with anyone. Can you can you get me some bags of dope? I'm I'm dope sick, and I had the my I had a lawyer I had a paid lawyer at the time say that it was it's called the agency defense. That's what the defense is called when it's entrapment. The agency defense, basically saying that an uh, undercover cop intimidated you or coerced you into selling them drugs. It's called the agency defense, and they gave me. I spent 10 days in jail. I got 10 days time served and misdemeanor probation for that. But I had already not shown up to my probation office in, in a few months, so I said, fuck it, what's, a few, what's another month? And that's, that's what you were facing while we were shooting the movie. Yeah, well, if you violate misdemeanor probation, the most you're facing... The most you're facing is, is a year. That's the most they can hit, but usually that doesn't happen. Usually you get hit with like maybe three months jail time if you violate misdemeanor probation. Later down the road, I ended up violating it, and I got 90 days. But I was sitting in jail 90 days, three months waiting to go to court anyway, so they said time served when I got to court. Why were you sitting in jail anyways? I don't even know that time, but it's always something. You have one minute left. We're going to get cut off. I'll talk to you tomorrow, all right? Okay, buddy. All Bye. Right. Thank you for using Securus. The caller has hung up.
Goodbye.